yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody have anything they want us to pray for before we, we, we go? Any, anyone at all? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, God's about to take the stealthy and make it visible. He's about to take the things that were hidden and expose them. For too long, He has had to have His people hidden and protected because they weren't strong enough to face what was coming. But I believe we're ready. I believe He's beginning to pull people out of caves. He's beginning to pull people out of their fears. Come on. He's beginning to pull people out of their confusion. He's beginning to pull people out of out of uh, false ideas even. False teaching that have so impacted and been a part of church for decades, if not longer. He's about to pull us out of that because we're ready. Everybody say, I'm ready. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to stand with legs of titanium. Come on. I'm ready to stand if I have to stand and face the beatdowns. Come on. How many know what a beatdown is? How many of you are from the street? How many of you are from the hood in here? If you ever got a beatdown, you know what a beatdown is. It isn't always physical. Come on, sometimes people beat you down. They make you feel like that big. They make you feel like you can't go on. That's what the enemy's been doing. He goes around what? Roaring like a lion. But if all he's got is a bark, come on. Come on. Look at somebody say, I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. Come on, we used to say it like this. I ain't scared. Come on, I ain't scared. I remember when we came to Utah, somebody said, you're going to Utah to start a church? I said, no. I'm going to Utah because that's where God is. Because He called us to go there. We did this wonderful study called Experiencing God, and it says don't invite God to come and join what you're doing. (laughs) Join what He's doing. And that's all we did. And I encourage you, join Him. Wherever He is moving and working, you go be a part of that and let Him use you and your gifts in that work. There's nothing worse than trying to use your efforts and your gifts and your talents and your anointings and your callings where it isn't needed or wanted. I'd love for you to come and stay. (laughs) Yeah, right? I know. We'd have Pastor Gary, Pastor Jerry. You know? I could go to Colorado to where God's calling us to go. And I, could, I, could, I could be on my way. All of them. Yeah, they were called to be there and beyond. What was that? I just didn't say it. Yeah. I just want you to know that God is doing great things already. Some of the things that you look for, you're conditioned by the media to see them. But God doesn't. He rules the media. The media doesn't know what He's doing. And so whenever we on a sabbatical can come up here and just have a time of refreshing with a trusted brother and sister who's not here today, and that our hearts can be knit together in one accord. And that is a mighty thing. There are great things going on in this whole area. Just one little thing that you need to know about is that we have a release time thing going on in the Cedar City area for high school students. And the denominational barriers are coming down. I love it. We are gathering a Pentecostal myself, another Pentecostal, Pastor Pete Akins, an independent charismatic Michael Cooper, and a uh, Southern Baptist, Randy Bond from Red Hills, and Pastor Joe Carroll. And we are loving each other. And God is building things that includes you as well up here. We just had a meeting with some of the people from the LDS seminaries, and they offered us meeting space. Do you know how big that is? Do you know that that's a sign of God moving? We probably won't accept it, but just for the offer to be made, 
is incredible. But you see, he's going to do something different here in Beaver. We will get to be in on it just like you get to be in on what we do. But you see, you just have to realize that God called you here at this hinge of history. That's right. Not by coincidence, yes. but by His sovereign plan. Right. I love this brother. Mm -hmm. I love what he's doing. I love the people. And so, <laughs> it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Marty. And so I'm going to pray for you. And so if you'd stand with me, and if you'd gather around Pastor Marty, and we're going to pray. You're going to have to get out of your pew, your favorite little parking spot. Some of you that said that you were called to ministry, whenever you say that, it's just like plowing a field. Once you start going, you have to go in a straight line. You don't plow in circles. And so the straight line that you're heading for has to be the establishment of God's kingdom. The up there, down here. And so we just need to join with Pastor Marty. Even if you don't like him and you disagree with him, don't talk against him. That is scary. That is very scary. It is. It's an awesome thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And you want to do it where He's got mercy for you. So let's pray. Almighty God, the One who made a way through Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, lived here 33 years. They took Him down to the town dump and they hung Him. Put Him in a borrowed tomb. On the third day, just like He said, you, by your almighty power, raised him from the dead before the stone was even moved away. And you appeared to women first, which at that time was not a reliable witness. And for us, that really establishes the truth of what you did. And then on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, you came with mighty power and 3,000 were called to You on that day and then multitudes after that and then myriads without number. And Lord, You've given us the privilege of being missionaries just like Barnabas, just like Paul, just like Silas, just like Timothy, just like Peter going to the house of Cornelius. In all of these ways, You've called us to put aside our preconceived notions, to put aside our past experiences, to put aside an identity that's apart from You, and to be able to accept Your call, Your commission. Your concerns are our concerns. We are just like Philip whenever he encountered the Ethiopian there reading Isaiah and didn't know what he was reading. And here we are in this culture. They think they know You, but they don't. And Lord, You have called us to love them, respect them, and honor them, and gain the entrance into their hearts that You have. And so I pray for Pastor Marty. And I pray for Sister Connie. And I pray as they invest in these great people here so that they can be the salt and the light. All of you can be the salt and the light here in this portion of southern Utah because you're getting ready to invade it. There's going to be a fire in the desert that has never been seen before. And so, Lord, I thank You for my brother. I thank You for his love for us. I thank You that You have given us love for him too that bonds us in Your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we just thank You for all of the things that You said You were going to do that You're starting to do, and that You're going to do. And Lord, we know that Your promises are sure. And we just count on those. And Lord, we do want to soar on wings like eagles. And we know that that only comes through You and Your Holy Spirit by the power of the risen Lord. And so we just bless this house, this congregation, this work here in Beaver, and Lord, all the way over to Milford and Minersville. And Lord, we just pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Bless you guys. We thank you all again, all you dads. Happy Father's Day. Uh, we don't have anything formal planned afterwards unless Esther wants to cook chicken. <laughs> you might want to evaluate on that. She didn't feel like coming because she's sick. <laughs> you didn't leave that out. She gave me a Praise God. Bless you guys. Thank you all for just being a part of what God is doing. Amen. Amen.